Hello everyone, my name is Nancy and welcome back to my channel where we play with a live bug. So if you're excited to see bugs every week, you should subscribe and then click the little bell notification so you can actually see the live bugs when they pop on. So today we're going to be talking about katydids and they normally come in this really beautiful green color but sometimes they show up in this really pretty pink color. And today we're going to talk about how these mutants happen. I'll be using a PDF today and you can get it too just by going down into the description box and there's a link for you right there to be able to get it. So today we're gonna to be talking about how Katie Dids are sometimes pink instead of the normal green. It's important to note that Katie Dids can come in almost a rainbow of colors. Katie Dids can come in green, which is most normal, brown, which is probably a second close normal, or they can come in pink, red, orange, or yellow. We actually have very little scientific data about pink katydids, and here are a few studies that I could even just find about the subjects. In 1907, pink katydids were identified as being genetic mutants for the first time. In 1929, a guy named Joseph Hancock bred pink katydids from a pink female and a green male. And then in 2008 is a study that we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about. And it was a very complex breeding experiment to try and see how we got pink katydids. And then in 2016, a new species, actually two new species were discovered and they found that the males were green, but the females were pink in this particular species. And that's all I could find about pink katydids in scientific literature was these five studies. You get two copies of every gene. You get one from your mom and you get one from your dad. But some variants are what we call dominant and some variants are what we call recessive. A dominant trait just means that you need one copy of the dominant version of that gene for it to be expressed. A really good example of this is when people have a widow's peak. The widow's peak is dominant, I'm recessive, I have a smooth hairline. Another example is if you have dimples, that is a dominant trait. If you don't have dimples, that is the recessive. People with the dominant trait can also be carriers for the recessive trait. And so they could have one version of the gene that's dominant and they can have one version of the gene that is recessive. And this is where we get into Mendelian genetics. Mendel was a monk and he started devising the mechanics behind genetics with his pea plants. Both parents both have the recessive trait they can only produce offspring that also has the recessive trait. There's no other option. And that's what we thought the pink Katie did weird. We thought that they were a recessive gene that got expressed in a rare amount of cases. In 2008, a guy by the name of Jamie did a really intense breeding experiment with Katie did. And this was the first example where we could actually kind of get a look into the genetics behind the different colors. Jamie was working for the Audubon Society and he was working in the Audubon Butterfly Garden and Insectarium where he conducted this experiment. Jamie received eight Katie dids that were pink and they were wild caught, which means that people just went out into their backyards and they found them and then they sent them to Jamie to do this experiment. So Jamie made it a pink female with a pink male of the wild caught Katie dids and out came the ratio. He got 31 pink Katie dids and four green ones. And if pink was truly a recessive trait, we would have expected 100% of the offspring to come out pink. But Jamie wasn't really su surprised or discouraged. He was like, well, Insects can mate multiple times during their lives. Perhaps the females that we caught had mated with a different male and so we're seeing the offspring from a different father. So then he conducted a few more rounds of experiments. For the second round, Jamie made sure that all of the females were virgins. So that way we knew that the eggs that the females produced came from the males that they were paired with. So the second round, he mated a virgin pink female with a green male. And the results were 73 were pink and 62 were green. 
For the third round, again, he used virgin females and he paired a green female with a pink male. And he got for the offspring, 12 were pink and 14 were green. For the fourth round, he used a green female and a green male, but these green katydids, their parents were pink. So it was pink parents that produced green katydids and then he bred those two green katydids together to produce all green katydids. For the fifth round of experiments, he used wild caught katydids and both the male and the female were green and they produced all green katydids. And for the sixth round, he used all lab reared katydids, both the female and the male were pink and they produced an offspring ratio of 65 came out pink and 19 came out green. For a bonus round, he put together two yellow katydids. He put together a yellow female and a yellow male and out came 12 of the offspring were yellow and eight were green. So this experiment really shattered the idea that the katydids that were pink were recessive because if the katydids that were pink was actually a recessive trait, you would expect to find pink parents that mated would produce all pink offspring, which was not the case. However, what was the case was that all green parents produced all green offspring. So this experiment showed that we had it backwards, that the pink is actually dominant, and in fact, yellow is even dominant to the green recessive trait. To be green, you actually need two copies of the green recessive trait, whereas to be pink or yellow, you only need one copy, and that is the dominant version. And you might be saying to yourself, well, that's kind of weird, because if green is recessive, why do we see it more in the population? And to that I answer selective pressure. The pink katydid, did. The pink katydid did is really quite beautiful, but stands out against green leaves. These green katydids, which most leaves are green, would blend in relatively easily and blend in really well. Therefore, there's a selective pressure to have green katydids, otherwise predators would just eat all the pink ones all of the time. Having recessive traits show up commonly and possibly more commonly than the dominant traits in a population is not unheard of. One great example in humans is having five fingers. Having five fingers is actually a recessive trait. Having six is the dominant trait. So I hope you like this little segment about genetics and a cool mutation found in some katydids and I hope that you look into your backyard and try and find some pink katydids yourself.